Hi everyone, uh, I am going to show you how to create method of enrollment including PayPal. I am already logged in and I am going straight to the site administration, then plugins and enrollments, which is one of the many things here. There are so many options. The easy way is to first go to manage enroll plugins so you can see the different types of methods which are already installed but inside it you will definitely see cohort synchronization, guest access, manual enrollment, PayPal and self-enrollment. So if you know which method you want to look at uh, you can immediately go to one of those otherwise you can go to manage enroll plugins. So as you can see these are the available enrollment plugins so um, there are others which are hidden right now which we are not using in this model but uh, they are also some op options we could use in, in another context for example so they are enabled right now so the one which, are, which we can use are the one, two, three, four, five methods over here but one of them even though if it's enabled uh, it is not being used right now so uh, we can go to each of them individually and look at the settings uh, quite quickly. So menu and enrollments uh, means you are going to add users individually. So it takes a lot of time. It's in the case of just adding, you know, a, a few individuals in the system. So we are not going to change anything here. Everything is by default. But we can look at the options available. Expir expiration action. So no, you keep the user enrolled. You can spend six hours without uh, hours to send enrollment expiry and application six. Okay, sorry. And add instance to new courses. Mm -hmm. It is possible to add this plugin to all new courses by default. Enable manual. Yes, of course. Default roles. E default role is a student, but you can change it. But most of the time, it is a student. Uh, enrollment duration, well, it's by default. Notify before enrollment expires, no. And threshold one day. So, all those we are not changing anything. We don't want to screw the whole system. <laughs> but uh, these are things we can look at in details. Okay, uh, now I'm going, so I'm using this menu, it's quicker. I am going to the guest access to see what the guest access settings. Uh, look like so uh, you can uh, access through a password but by default it is no uh, password policy as well you can just decide what kind of password will be uh, used for, uh, by the user you can't just have a simple password it has to be also safe show hints that's also a possibility add instance to new course this again comes Allow guest access. So here it's no by default. All temporary guest access by default. All right. Then you go to paper to have a look at what it is. So that's uh, actually not being used in the module uh, right now in this particular module. You have to put your business email and notify student by default because most of the time you offer a, a course to students but it can be teachers okay enrollment expiration again you have this possibility to change it but here by default is disable course enrollment and remove roles which is different than manual enrollment for example allow paper enrollment by default no here you put the cost of your uh, paypal of your course and the currency and the, the, the assigned role will be the one of a student, but you can change it. Depends if you are doing a Moodle MOOC, then uh, you might as well give a non editing or teacher or manager role. Enrollment duration as well, you can change it. So, uh, for example, when you set the cost and the currency, uh, it, will, it is going to look like this, for example. This course requires a payment for entry. When you go to the course, the student will see that he has to pay uh, first to access the course. Okay, I'm back. Now we're looking at self-enrollment. This uh, makes uh, anybody uh, self-enroll, but how? 
do you require a key? Sometimes you can require a key, so you can tick this box and give a key, so then you can just, uh, you know, kind of select, uh, send the key to the one you want to, uh, who wants to enroll themselves. Use password policy, this is uh, that we have seen before, show hint, expiration action is as the manual enrollment, keep user enrolled, and six as per the manual enrollment. Scroll down and see the different parameters. So nothing much uh, to nothing also different here. I mean, all right. Enable self enrollment. Yes. Allow users to self enroll. Okay. Use group enrollment keys by default. No. Okay, you can change that. Again, the role by default is a student. Duration is zero days. Okay. That means. If set to zero, the enrollment will be unlimited by default, but you can change it. It can be a course of a month, so you put 30 days. You don't notify the enrollment expires because it's set to zero. Stress uh, all and enrolling active offers never. Send course welcome and message if you want to. Why not? Yes. Okay, and I've not looked at the cohort. I love the cohort because it's so so useful. You can just enroll so many people at a time. So by default, if you are in a cohort, you are a student, but you can change that and and enroll users from course. Okay, external and enroll action. If you select that, then uh, select action to carry out when user enrollment disappears from external enrollment core source. Please note that some user data and settings are purged from course during course and enrollment. Okay, so this again is my default. So, these are the so many options given for you to enroll students. So, you just choose according to your situation what is the best and according to different users as well. For a big school, uh, you can just uh, create some different cohorts for grades or for groups of study which is very useful. Then if you have individuals who want to access, like maybe it's easier to have a manual enrollment at that time. And it's nice to self-enroll. It's nice to have a guest access. And people, obviously, if you have a course that is uh, not free, then uh, PayPal is a really good option.